Okay. So, welcome back. We are on topic 7.10, speciation. Uh, we are talking about post-zygotic barriers now. We talked about pre-zygotic barriers uh, in the last video. Now, I have a picture here of a mule. I want you to uh, maybe write down just a little bit before we begin. Uh, just write down a little paragraph describing why you think I have a picture of a mule here when I talk about post-zygotic barriers, uh, which result in speciation. I'm going to write that down, I'm going to pause the video, and we'll get back to it. Okay, hopefully you wrote something down. Uh, we will be visiting this in just a little bit, so keep this mule in mind. I'll talk specifically about this example. Uh, but first, let's talk about what happens when two different species that are very closely related. In other words, if you were to, you know, if you were to draw your little phylogenetic tree here, species, okay, these species would be extremely closely related, right? Very closely related. So closely related that they can actually have viable, or maybe not viable offspring, but offspring that are, you know, that you can see, touch, they grow up. Um, of course, post-zygotic barriers happen after a zygote is formed, so it makes sense. Uh, the first, uh, you know, thing we need to think about when we talk about post-zygotic uh, isolating mechanisms is that sometimes if a species is very, the species is very close to another species and they are able to Produce an offspring, that offspring is frail because they have too many genes that either compete for, for dominance or interact with each other. And it results in a in a in a, a weaker individual, as is the case of the cell. So the genes of parent species may interact and impair this hybrid. Hybrid is the term for the offspring of two different species. Um, they do not compete, uh, do, do not complete development, and if they do complete development, they are too frail to really survive in the ecosystem, right? Um, so, this is one post-zygotic mechanism. Again, post-zygotic meaning this happens after zygote. After zygote, right? Let's talk about another one. Reduced hybrid fertility. So, sometimes you have hybrids, such as is the case between the horse and the donkey, which make the mule. That are vigorous. They are vigorous in the sense that they are uh, not frail. They are actually mules are actually very strong, but they are sterile. They're sterile, meaning that mules cannot have children. Right. This means that this this means that this is species one and species two. They can have children, but this this barrier occurs kind of after that zygote forms. Right. Because after this mule, you don't have any more in this population. So these are two different species. Um, in fact, the reason for this is that or one of the reasons, is that mules have 63 chromosomes. Uh, if you remember meiosis, you can do the math on this, but uh, you would end up with, uh, you know, half of these chromosomes. This donkey would have half of these chromosomes. If you combine that together, 31 plus 32, you get 63 chromosomes. So these mules have a very odd number of chromosomes, and they can't really effectively complete meiosis, um, not in any meaningful way, uh, so they are sterile. This is why you have two different species when I talk about a horse and a donkey instead of just the same species. Because as you said, if you remember, the definition of a species was something that can interbreed and have viable offspring or offspring that can have more offspring. And mules cannot do that. Right? This is the end of the line for mules. Um, here's some experimental evidence I wanted to talk about a little bit. There's this lady, Diane Dodd, 1989. Um, is kind of a common thing you'll see in college textbooks. She took some fruit flies and she bred them in different mediums. One of them she had in starch medium, one of them she had in a maltose medium. And she loved the generations pass on growing in these different, with these different foods, right? Um, and what she found out after several generations, and this is just several generations, which is not much for a fruit fly, really. Um, she noticed that the starch medium flies preferentially mated with other starch flies. Uh, also, these flies that had been raised on mal maltose for several generations, preferentially mated with maltose flies. Now, of course, you did have some uh, breedings that were not like this, but in general, there was a preference, a statistically significant preference, for flies that were raised in the same medium. Um, this is kind of a version of, uh, of speciation. Um, I want you to go ahead and uh, pause it, look back at your notes, and uh, tell me what type of isolation this might be. Um, 
judging, ju judging by the different prezygotic variants that we see. Tell me what type of speciation example this might be. Um, and we'll talk about this one in class because I think this is an interesting one. Okay.